another month has come and gone, and it is time for the November, there we go, episode of Choose Our Own Adventure, uh, Patreon show. So all y'all listening, uh, you're at least at the $7 tier, we appreciate your, uh, your patronage, and hope you enjoy the show and uh, keep giving us your money. I'm here with the usual cast of characters to my right. I have the former Test Your Might trivia champ. I would like to use the word inaugural. No. <laughs> <laughs> we now have a hall of champions. So, <laughs> Like I said, we have a broom closet of champions. <laughs> not, I'll take it. I'll take it. Not quite a hall yet. <laughs> more, more, more than WWE has for their hall of fame. That's true. All right. <laughs> they don't even have uh, a physical building. <laughs> and then across the table, we have always the Test Your Might bridesmaid, but never the Test Your Might bride, Mr. Brian Martin. How yeah, I think, I think I'm going to win like a Test Your Might lifetime achievement award one day <laughs> like the like the susan lucci of yeah. Like, yeah. susan lucci of movie trivia <laughs> Brian Martin. and then across the table we have the incredibly test your might adverse leslie ellsworth that's me <laughs> uh how are your holidays kicking off so far people not, not bad. I'm I'm anxiously awaiting getting out of work Wednesday oh, in the man. afternoon. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God. Oh, it's right. This is hey, we're leading up to Thanksgiving. This is I'm gonna, gonna be the Thanksgiving Eve episode. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna beat it like Fred Flintstone. Dude. Yes. <laughs> you slide down, slide down, down, down a dinosaur. dinosaur. I'm <laughs> jumping out a window. <laughs> Basely Sprock is Martin just <laughs> shattering the window on my car as I dive into it. <laughs> Yabba dabba dude, right on out of work that day. <laughs> <laughs> What's insane for the rest? I of think the that week? I think that's grounds for termination at my job. I think there's actually a thing on the employee employee termination form that says yabba dabba dude out of the workplace. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um, so yeah, we got the we got Black Friday coming up. Do you guys gonna try to get in any uh, any pop culture shit with Black I'm Friday probably, deals? I'm probably gonna get a lot of Blu-rays. Okay, I'd, all right. I kind of held off um, most of the year. I was looking because Best Buy has a lot of good stuff for yeah. like starting at like three ninety nine and, and up. Yeah, so yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you, Leslie? Anything you looking at? Um, no, I'm I'm Black Friday averse personally. Wow. Black Friday averse and test your might averse. Mm. Wow. We will find out through the rest of this episode <laughs> what Ellsworth does not fuck with. <laughs> test your might. I might have the trivia in my brain somewhere, but I am not fast to to pull it up. That's why I do better with regular trivia. Notice I said mm-hmm. better, not great. <laughs> <laughs> I've asked you a couple of the test your might questions, and you've gotten a, a good number of them right. Yeah. Not in the allotted time frame, but you've exactly. A good right. It's hard it, when you're when you're under the gun and, and yeah. the pressure is real and in the moment it's really hard yeah. to yeah i forgot who jesse ventura was at one point i mean that's <laughs> trust and believe yeah we've had quite a few brain farts on yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm working with pete lentz to uh, start writing questions um, oh wow. so Very nice. i might be a contestant in next oh, season oh interesting Ooh. interesting there's gonna be a yeah. lot of questions about nudity on screen <laughs> the last, the whose last... titties are these pete I mean, <laughs> this is an audio podcast the all titty round it's gonna be just like you know how they have those rounds where they remove the people and you have to identify that the movie <laughs> It's going to be, I remove the head, and you just have the titties. <laughs> Sadly oh, this, enough, I might be able to identify. <laughs> yeah. Whose titties are these round is new coming here? Season <laughs> three. It's like, that's Phoebe Cates. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian, anything uh, Black Friday-ish that you're looking at picking up? Uh, yeah, I'm with Germana. There's, there's a couple, a handful of Blu-rays that I'm probably going to pick up. Um, that's, uh, that's about it. I feel like it's going to be kind of a light Black Friday for me this year. Mm, okay, all right, all right, excellent, excellent. So let's get uh, let's get down into this uh, bit of business, man, for this month. Now, before we get into the the questions that you wonderful ten dollar people and up uh, have provided for us, let's talk about this Disney Plus, man. It is the, the oh boy the big <laughs> the big news over the last couple of weeks. To uh, the Disney streaming service is up and running, finally up and running. Uh, what was the first thing that you guys watched on the Disney Plus joint when it came up? Surprisingly enough, episode three. I watched Revenge, Revenge of the, the Sith. That's right. Hot damn. Yeah. <laughs> you can't see my face just, right now, but it's very confused. I just, I don't know. It's something about that whole, especially that whole scene with Anakin getting his limbs lopped off and, and, and <laughs> never <burned> looked better. <laughs> Yeah. I was Crystal just like, clarity. I'm so still like, crispy. I was like, Obi Wan, you are a dick. You should have gave him the mercy kill, man. What, you, what is wrong with you? Oh, well, we had to get his speech in first. Yeah. <laughs> I, bet that, I bet that smelled delicious. Oh, my <laughs> God. Ah, like a little like, bit of Old Bay like on the limbs. Like, oh, like yeah. Brisket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what 
uh, Leslie, what's the first thing you watched on, on D+. Plus? Uh, the Mandalorian, because you were ever so kind to wait for me to get home to watch it. Oh. oh. I oh. wasn't happy about this at all. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go on record as saying, I'm just sitting here on Twitter, people are like, the Mandalorian is great! And I'm just sitting on the couch like, this is some bullshit. <laughs> I didn't ask, but I very much appreciated it. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> <laughs> It was episode four. Uh, and, and episode four is kind of like my just benchmark. Every time I get a new component for an entertainment center, or I get a new TV or a new like Blu-ray player or whatever, that's the first thing I put in. Okay. I, and, and I don't know why, but that's just kind of just my litmus test for how the whole thing's going to go. So I watched uh, episode four. I put it on at work and just let it run in the background mm, for a while. That's and, uh, okay. So so. I was I was at on the cusp of McClunky. <laughs> oh, God. McClunky. Um, All its McClunky glory. <laughs> uh, uh, combining the what the two of you uh, guys do for the longest, whenever I got a new sound system, uh, I always used episode three as my litmus test because the sound design, especially during the final light series battle, is mwah. yeah <laughs> yeah that movie is wonderfully uh, wonderfully arranged with sound. I watched uh, MCU's Expanding the Universe documentary. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, nice. watched that. Nice. Yeah, that was the first thing I checked out. Uh, shorter than I liked, but you know, got a little a little peek at some artwork and you know <laughs> the, the the title design for the Hawkeye series. I do believe was on yep. there. Yep, oh. yep. Yes, very nice, very nice. Uh, so D plus in general, what do, what are you guys liking about it? What are you not liking about it? Um, I think they. What else well, have you all? Watched? Obviously, they've yeah, because some of the stuff I found they've kind of butchered order wise. Yeah, like, that's the biggest that's problem kinda, with yeah. it, and 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 it's not limited to like say X Men, which right. the X Men animated series th- is completely out of order mm-hmm. from season two on. Yeah, cool. uh, yeah, but it's it, and I was most surprised when I went to things like the new run of Ducktales is not in order. Oh, wow. David Tennant is upset. Like it's <laughs> it's like the first episode of the show is like the fourth episode in viewing order How on the show. You? On, on the, that up. It seems really unlikely, but they found a way. And <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing that's really, really frustrating. That if you want to watch these shows in any discernible order, you should probably check like the web and make sure that you're watching it get in the right order. order. Yeah, get your watching order together. Now they've said, I think they've said they're going to fix that and they're going to fix the aspect ratio on The Simpsons, which is the second thing I noticed. <laughs> because yeah. because the other thing I watch to sort of just as, as a benchmark for how any sort of service looks is the You Only Move Twice episode of The Simpsons with uh, Hank Scorpio, Albert Brooks. Yes, it Hank is Scorpio. my favorite episode of The Simpsons. <laughs> and, and you could tell, like, this doesn't look right. I've seen this show enough to know what every frame of this episode looks like, and, and it's wrong. Uh, so they've said they're going to fix that in the coming year, though. So In the coming year? Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, what else have you watched there, Leslie? Um... So I watched Piper, one of the little animated shorts. It was yeah. adorable. Um, and then I watched Sleeping Beauty recently because that is probably my favorite classic Disney yeah. movie. Uh, threw on some uh, Wild Yellowstone, I believe, while I was doing some gaming so I could have some pretty pictures and, and commentary in the background. Yeah, All right, very yeah very got, nice. got down on some of that Monkey Kingdom yesterday. Yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. I watched <laughs> <laughs> You know, last you know, yesterday it was like just miserable outside, so I stayed in and you know watching some stuff. And I uh, caught that first episode of the Jeff Goldblum show. Oh, yeah, man. that dude oh. is like he's just quirky as hell. He's the man. weirdest. Guy, yes, man. he's the weirdest. <laughs> he's damn dude. seeing him because the first episode was about sneakers or whatever, and seeing him at, with all the sneaker heads at these conventions and stuff, and literally him out there playing a pickup game of basketball with these street ball dudes. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Bye. there was literally one dude. is like, what, what's your name? It's like sick with it. It's like sick, sick with. It. <laughs> it's like, it's like what, why did they call you that? It's like, because <laughs> I'm sick with it. That's why. And he was talking to tell the story about his uncle who used to play ball and stuff. It's like, it's uh, that's what's up. That's, yeah, man. That, but that's he is he is out dude. there, man. That's weird dude. Yeah, man. There, there's some good stuff on there at Disney Plus. I haven't had a, really gotten a chance to like, get meaty with it yet. Um, Mandalorian, uh, a little bit of For the sure. uh, the eighty Spider Man. Yeah. Definitely threw that on there. I watched some of the old Fantastic Four cartoon as well. I've been holding off on X Men. 
I might just hold off until next year to make sure when they I get, get it that straight. <laughs> yeah, get that right. Or you can just Google a, a viewing order. It is, it is wildly out of order. Like, just, just starts with Days can... of Future Past Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because I think you can, they have, you can put together a watch list, can't you? So I guess, I'm assuming you could just you can't do it order in your, I can't, the watch oh, Yeah, I don't oh. think you can do it episode by episode. And ah. I have a complaint about that watch list. Yeah. There is no watch history. There is no continue watching feature. They already said they're working on that right now. Okay. Right, right now, that's... I'm glad there isn't one because uh, Jacqueline has just been having Miles watch all of his programming on my account. Mm. So well, you I'm, can I'm set up the different. It. I did. <laughs> the, very first thing, the very first thing I did was set up an account for me, for Jacqueline, and for Miles. Yeah. And she just completely defaults to mine. And that's funny. I put, I put a bunch it's of... Rude. The funniest thing, though, I think maybe this is why she did is because her account has... I just set up like her watch list and it's nothing but like high school musical and just like a bunch of bullshit. She is definitely not interested in. <laughs> what do you got to do? Go put all your shit on Miles. And That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not like a Netflix thing where you have to worry about him watching some inappropriate material. <laughs> yeah, that's true. true. That's true. I'm looking at my watch list now, man. They got some Tron on there. Return to Oz, which yeah. I hear. Oh, oh, that's oh wow. <gasps> oh man, that yeah. movie is. I've heard not... it's fucked up. I've never seen I it. I know what I'm doing today. I go. know. <laughs> I have been looking for that movie since I was little. I watched it. You know, a, a handful of times, yeah. maybe. Creepy as I saw fuck. that shit in the movie theater. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I also uh, checked out The Rocketeer for the first time ever. Oh, uh, really? The first day it dropped. Yeah, that's a good You've movie. never that's seen good, that before? Man. I never. I did the whole wow. time. I was just like, this is why they got Joe Johnston to do that. Oh, yeah. Hell America. yeah. Because yeah. I, I, that was another one I saw in the theater uh, yeah. when it came out. I love, love, love that movie. I remember it was, I was like, oh, that'd be, like, be a, a pretty fucking interesting joint. I'll get around to that one day. And then Sky Captain World Tomorrow came out, and everybody was like, it's kind of like Rocketeer. Tearish, and I saw Sky Captain. I was like, "Well, that shit's kind of whack." So I don't think I need to watch Rocketeer. And, That's exactly uh, the reason I love Sky Captain. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Hell yeah!" Because I was like, "I was like, yeah, okay, you know what? This thing is missing jetpack." There's your yeah, there, jetpack. There's, jet right? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a, a dude I follow on Twitter and uh, is part of the uh, Collider Podcast Network, and he sings the praises of Rocketeer whenever he gets the opportunity. So when it dropped. I, uh, I shot him a line and I was like, I'm going to finally sit in the watch the Rockets here. And he's like, it's about goddamn time. And man, that movie's so good. I <laughs> yes, love it. All right, let's song. get into this bits of businesses. First up comes from longtime listener Vikram, who's currently working on moving from one house to another house. He says, Who is your favorite director and why? I kept it nice and simple. Wow. For well, we did ask question. question. I yeah. did ask for simpler questions. You did. Direct questions, and I really regret that's a having very, that. <laughs> that's a very broad question. Yeah, yeah it, it is a simple question with a million possible yes, answers. I, a million possible reasons. I had my answer, but I was thinking of some other stuff, too, because, you, you know, there's other directors that I like, you know, certain aspects of, but I got to go Tarantino, man. You got to go, come yeah. On, come on. Yeah, that, like, was, that was my number two. Two name that came yeah, up. Yeah, like what? Uh, I, what about Tarantino? Like, I mean, his his movies are so stylish. You know that he gets something out of his cast that nobody else can get out of out of people. Um, he seems like he's in tune with pop with the pop culture zeitgeist. Like all, a lot of the conversations that a lot of the characters have in there are always you know have something to do with what's going on or something pop culture related, which is kind of my, my cup of tea. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, there's the ultra violence and the profanity and everything. And <laughs> he just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does it so cartoonishly that, you you yeah, know... You it's can't not help like, but laugh. Yeah. 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 Uh, what about you, Brian? I, you know, I, I, I go back and forth on this, and it almost depends on the day of the week, but the one I go to most frequently is Scorsese. Mm. Um, ah, the just, man who makes good cinema. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, he's none of that MCU bull crap. Uh, <laughs> he's I, I just... I'm always hard pressed to think of a movie of his that I was just like, well, that was a failure. Yeah. That didn't work on any level. And when he's on point, he's creating the greatest movies of a, you know, of the 20th multiple century and beyond, yes. you know? I yeah. mean, like, he's been in the game for, you know, 40 years or so, and he's just knocking him out of the park, still knocking him out and of he the hasn't, park. Yeah, he really has not lost a step. Yeah. Have you, did you see Silence? I did not see Silence. Man, that is a beautiful fucking movie. Yeah. It's, I didn't it's see long, it you got to settle in for. It's yeah, three hours. It wasn't really, play, it, like it played at the, like the, the Regal Manor for like a week or yeah. something. So I just missed it and never picked it up. But uh, I got to get, I got to get there. Beautiful. Beautiful. When you have a spare uh, day and a half, go ahead and watch <laughs> that. Uh, for me, it is uh-uh, Chris Nolan. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. it, it always that was the other one I was kind of yeah, yeah always will be Chris Nolan I suspect dude creates films for people who want to think 
I think. Um, he and he, he he's great with maneuvering between your popcorn movies. Like I would consider the Batman trilogy a fairly popcorn Paul Kirkwood type movie. But then in between those, he gave us fucking Inception, yeah. which is. <laughs> the weirdest heist movie you will ever see. Yes. <laughs> uh, a brain heist? Who thinks of that? Um, the Prestige. The was Prestige. Yeah, yeah, it was in between Batman movies. Uh, a criminally underrated movie, I think. Uh, Crush the Illusionist, I'll tell you that much. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and then he gave us Interstellar, which is like our generation's 2001 Space Odyssey. I, yeah, think. I, think, I, think, I think Nolan is like the Michael Bay of the mind. You know, where it's like, yeah. Bay, is, Bay is about, like, what you can see. Like, Nolan is about here, but why don't you think instead? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like coming um, out of the gate with Memento. I was like, holy shit. What is, like, yeah. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. Yeah. I have a early version of Memento on DVD where you needed to unlock a puzzle to get to the menu. And the clues were in back when DVDs came with, like, little bonus books and stuff. Oh, nice. All the clues were in that book. Well, I tossed all that. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a DVD memento I've never been able to watch because I can't get past the opening. <laughs> Google um, exists. Yeah, you know Google, this, right? Google exists. <laughs> it's um, more, more trouble than it's worth, though. In, in yeah. the world of scream, uh, streaming, it's uh, it's like, why, why even bother with this? Why put, why put a disc into a machine? Yeah. Because I think uh, that was it was Dark Knight, which is probably one of my favorite movies ever like where I kind of noticed his like the cinematography is just like so you use those start using those IMAX yeah, cameras yeah, in, yeah. in regular film yeah. that's thanks to uh, thanks to Nolan and I think people don't give Dunkirk enough credit when you see like how he put it all together absolutely he was like, what's one hour one day one week this doesn't make any sense check out Dunkirk if you have less yeah, absolutely um so I don't have a specific favorite um when it comes to a lot of things uh, behind the camera, that's that's somewhere where I'm more recently building my knowledge. Uh, but I had to go with Guillermo del Toro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I Good love pick. the yeah. way his films look. Yeah. They all have that fairy tale quality to yes. them. Um, they're just they're beautiful. I love them. And and if I hear that he's attached to something, I get excited about it. I feel like del Toro has a vision for a movie in his head and he doesn't stop until his vision is exactly what you see on the screen. Right. Yes. And that's you know? why we never got that Hellboy 3. Right. <laughs> He's like, this is what this is what money I need to do what I want to do. You and you're like, we're not ponying up that dough because yeah. your past experiences will not give us our money back. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, I guess we're not doing fucking Hellboy 3. Yeah, you can tell, especially going from Hellboy 1 to 2 because he did uh, Pan's Labyrinth in between. Like, You can really see his influence on, on Hellboy 2. Like, yeah. Full Del Toro. Yeah. Yeah. As I yeah. said. And, <laughs> Pan's, I, I just randomly picked it up one day going walking through Best Buy and I was like oh, this seems like an interesting movie and put it in and I was like my word I've right? never quite seen anything like this before it's so good. right it's even so good. yeah even something as pedestrian as I guess what Pacific Rim like mm. you, know, you can <laughs> yeah. still see his touches on it yeah, yeah. Uh, and Shape of Water which we saw yes. which I think is an amazingly incredible film supplemented by a wonderful score as well there mm-hmm. uh, fish fucking alright let's move it on <laughs> <laughs> Duke Juan Grady Swain Yes. Hits us with a doozy. Hits us with a doozy, man. We got to build a movie, guys. Oh, Quentin boy. Tarantino was directing a movie about the first Thanksgiving. Have that with the stars in the plot. <laughs> oh, fuck. I forgot about stars. I was oh. so worried about the, the crazy ass <laughs> plot of this. Shit. I'm going to be I'm going to be shocked if any one of our movies ends differently than the others. I you think there's a shock. My yeah, really? OK. All right. Let's see. Okay, yeah, let's... All right, then. Who wants to kick this bad boy off? Sh- shall I? <laughs> <laughs> it's called Thanksgiving, motherfucker. This is Star Samuel L. Jackson. It's actually called the Thanksgiving Day Massacre. Or whatever. <laughs> so, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It? Yeah, Sam Jackson is in it. <laughs> of course, of course he is. Come on, come on. No, it's it's about the uh, first Thanksgiving. Um, there's going to be all these different groups and tribes and stuff trying to come together for this meeting or whatever for you know with food basically like a giant potluck the first potluck right on whatever. the first block part yeah you know there was like all these <laughs> folks yeah all these folks were warring and stuff and they're trying to bring peace together here by coming together this one time for for a meal um yeah you got um sam jackson in a tribe you have the roth tribe with uh, tim roth eli roth <laughs> and, and david lee roth <laughs> 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 
Um, yeah, you got uh, Michael Madsen, of course, Kurt Russell's in mm-hmm, there, mm-hmm. Christoph Waltz, uh, Uma Thurman, Melissa McCarthy, Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, he comes out of retirement for this. Stuff. Yes, he's going to come out of retirement or for, to um, lead the Native American tribe. Sure. There. <laughs> Checks out. He's, oh, yes. yes, he is the last of the boat. He yes, is. Yeah. he is. Yes, he okay. is. Um, so, of course, they come together. There's all this tension building and everything. <laughs> and all the other this. Native Americans are like, why are we calling him the last right now? <laughs> like you get to, just the Mohican. We're all we're all still you get here. you get to a point where they're like, like you know Sam shows up and it's of course it's gonna it's Tarantino so there's gonna be some acronyms in there mm-hmm. he's gonna be like so mm-hmm. I guess we see who's bringing the fried chickens like, <laughs> and then Sam's like well, he's like motherfucker we brought green bean casserole <laughs> so of course you know so eventually it pops off and everything mm-hmm. just goes to hell and they start battling at the table and all this stuff I love it and a bit of, in a bit of um, Tarantino you know revisionist history they um. Damn near end up wiping each other out, except for Dan Day Lewis and the Native Americans who end up taking over America. Very nice. There Very it nice. is. There it is. And right. they, you know, they with their run over America and everything, they um, you know, start with um, corporate America and all this stuff. They they were the founders of this um, cigarette brand called Red Apple. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm yeah, all in there. <laughs> yeah, got everything. Right all in there. I like it. I like it. <laughs> uh, I'll go next with mine. My nonsense. Uh, mine's gonna. Uh, mine's a Romeo and Juliet style type deal okay. here at this point in time uh, the pilgrims have come over on the Mayflower and all that good shit and their giant ships which Columbus burned and the <laughs> initial meeting with the natives appears friendly and all that and then when the pilgrims see the extent of the land and the resources that the Native Americans have they're like we're gonna take all this shit guys and that's exactly what they start doing and it's just war war is the backdrop of this entire thing and it's Quentin Tarantino, so there's Native Americans getting blown out of their shoes by muskets. <laughs> it's just people getting riddled with like 40 arrows <laughs> all at once, like the giant Boromir style arrows, too. <laughs> In the face and the fucking back of one up the ass. Uh, Native Americans are starting buffalo stampedes to take out whole companies of people. It's going to be a wild ass war. And in the middle of all this, man, there's one pilgrim and one Native American that find common ground and love. And while the war still rages in the background, they grow in love. And the actual first Thanksgiving is just this pilgrim, this Native American, and their brand new kid sitting down for dinner. And an Italian man making them spaghetti. <laughs> hey, somebody, you have a, some, have a spaghetti. <laughs> Very random, but yes, he is invited as well. So the actual first Thanksgiving is not a huge deal, but just a small, intimate family affair. And they're giving thanks that they found each other in the middle of all this craziness. Okay. Yeah. Brian, you want to go there? Sure. Uh, so mine, I, and with German's movie ends the way mine ends, too, with the Native Americans winning. Um, <laughs> you don't the, say. The, the revisionist history. So, uh, it's, I mean, it's pretty pretty straightforward. It's, it's more told from the point of view of the Native Americans mm-hmm. in the sense that uh, they're, they're acting friendly and welcoming. And then underneath it all, they're like, we got to kill these white guys. I like it. <laughs> um, my movie stars Brad Pitt as uh, Governor William Bradford. Andrew Garfield as uh, Edward Winslow, who documented the first Thanksgiving. Uh-huh. And then um, Anya Taylor-Joy as his wife. Uh, and then Wes Studi as Chief of the Savages. <laughs> Wes Studi. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, Zan McLaren as Warhawk. He's from uh, Dr. Sleep and, uh, and uh, Fargo mm-hmm. and Westworld. And, of course, Scarlett Johansson as Squanto. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And it ends with just a, a com- colossal massacre of which Andrew Garfield is the only survivor. Because Andrew Garfield is a pure soul. Right. And he's got he's to document the whole he's thing. He's got to document the whole thing. <laughs> hey, don't kill him. He's, he's running the cameras. But don't exist yet. All right. Leslie, it's all on you. Uh, so I went in a very similar vein as Brian. Um, <laughs> what, Studi peers in yours as well? Um, I guess so... So I I definitely went with the revisionist history, and I I ended up digging into the first Thanksgiving on Wikipedia quite a bit. So thank you for that because it is very interesting. Um, Green bean casserole was actually present. Not not a lot, not a lot of turkeys. The speculation there might have been turkeys. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. What kind of Thanksgiving dinner is this? We're going to open with um, Samoset walking into Plymouth. He's the the first Native American they met, and he had learned a little bit of broken English. So he's going to walk in and be like, hey, hi, guys. Got some beer? Killed (laughs) killed immediately. Like, like historically, that's pretty much what he did. Yeah. 
So then he's going to go back to his place. He's going to talk to Squanto, who was actually um, picked up and taken as a slave in England for a little while. That's why he knows English. Mm. So they're going to plot together. He's going to tell them about this uh, this ship captain who's the slave trader and tell them about all the horrible massacres and such. So they're going to come up with their plan to gain their trust and then slaughter them on Thanksgiving Day. There you go. Uh, yes. We're going to have... Um, Rick Mora is going to be Squanto, David Midthunder as Samoset, William Bradford is going to be played by Nicholas Holt. He is the oh. young governor uh, who takes over after the original dies. Yeah. Then we have Stephen Hopkins, who is the assistant to the governor, uh, will be played by Tom Hiddleston, and his wife Elizabeth Hopkins, one of the four cook, four cooks, and one of the only. Uh, I, I believe there were like essentially only four adult women who yeah, survived. Most of the women were dead. <laughs> yeah. So she's going to be played by Billy Piper. And uh, we're going to have the wonderful Tim Roth as Hunt, the ship captain and slaver. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right, Tim Roth. Like yeah. that. Uh, excellent. Excellent. Like it. Well done all around, folks. Uh, it's time for our favorite couples, Shannon and Scott. And Shannon. A nice, broad, easy question for you here, Brian. Uh, you get to add a new category for awards at either the Academy Awards, the Oscars, or the Emmys. What is it? Uh, for me, there's only one answer. There's only one. I think there's only one answer, too. What is your only one answer? We'll say it at the same time. One, two, three. Stunts. Best titties. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about going with that as a joke, but I was like, wait a minute. Brian's not going to say that. That's not, Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> That's not my answer. That's not my real That's answer, terrible. but go ahead with stunts. That's not my answer either. Stunts, really? stunts, stunts is not my answer. Uh, for me, it, it, it's, the, it's the one thing they've been campaigning for for like a decade <laughs> that the Academy just will not do. People have died actively in the middle of shooting film. No other category has anyone actively, no director is having heart attacks in the middle of filming a scene, all right? There's, there's nobody <laughs> dropping dead in the middle of doing a walk-in talk. The writers aren't out there just passing out left and right all over the place. People are actively giving their lives for entertainment. We need to award these people, or at least recognize their achievements and accomplishments in doing some of the most ridiculous, crazy, something I'm going to talk about later on is one of the most ridiculous stunts I've seen in a film from the 70s. And it is absolutely amazing. These people need to be rewarded, admired, and recognized for what they can do, what they put themselves through, the harm that they put themselves in. I mean, people out there losing moms, dads, brothers, sisters, just so we can be entertained. What's yeah. yours, sir? Best trailer. Ooh. Ooh. I, and this is one I've thought about for a long time because the wizards that are able to edit something out of nothing. Mm. Suicide Squad. Yeah, uh, Suicide Squad. I, I think like the very first movie where I started to realize how skilled these people have to be is The Avengers, not Marvel's The Avengers. I mean the one the from Uma like, Thurman. The Uma Thurman and uh, Ray, Fiennes. Ray, Fiennes. Ray Fiennes and Sean, Sean Connery. Connery. This uh, is merely the beginning. Because that trailer was exquisite mm -hmm. and that movie was a heaping pile of shit <laughs> uh, it was it was just like i could not believe how they were able to make something so lousy look so good um and uh, other movies that i could think of the first the teaser trailer for the time machine with uh guy pierce, guy pierce. It, right that it, the teaser trailer looked like a car ad for for half of it, and then all of a sudden you realize, oh shit, they're talking about a time machine. And it was such a great, great teaser trailer. And I just think that's a field that gener generally goes unrecognized. A, a lot of people who go to the movies don't even quote unquote like watching the trailers. We know they really do because these trailers on YouTube get millions hits after upon hits after millions. hits. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, people complain, oh, there's too many ads in front of the movie. It's like. There needs to be some recognition there, I think, because okay. these guys can cut together some really, really terrific stuff. Yeah, no, been... let's be honest; those millions of hits are just us watching them over and over. <laughs> That's and true. Over it's like over. the same ten people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there have been some trailers that have, like, you know, go to the theater, seeing these trailers beforehand. They've walked me into a theater. Like yeah. they've, they've, yeah, I've seen some. Say, oh, I'm in. I'm in. Like, All right. Like okay. the Cloverfield trailer. I was oh, like, man. oh man, that was great. Yes, the Cloverfield trailer was awesome. All right, Leslie, what you got? Um. So I figured you would go with stunts uh, because I, I do agree that is definitely 
a category that's lacking. Um, so instead, I went with, um, well, first I went with the Emmys, and currently there's like a fantasy sci-fi makeup and costuming, and then um, fantasy sci or no, production design for a narrative period or fantasy, and that's it. So I would give sci-fi fantasy their own category for leads, for art, for everything. Just their own category, full stop. They don't get treated like dramas. They, they're they always going to get overlooked in that part. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that give that give that genre the recognition it deserves because there are good things happening. There are great things happening with fantasy and sci-fi that just don't get seen. They don't get recognized. I like it. That's fair. Just, just not another life, though. That, 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 was, that was a mess. <laughs> oh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna put the, the best trailer for life up for a nomination. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, this show was pretty damn interesting. They got me. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you stinkers, you got me again. You got me again. All right, Javon. Um, I went, and I think I can't remember if they do this for the Emmys or not, but I felt they should do this for Oscars too, because you know. Of course, most of the acting um, stuff is for individual um, acting awards. Right. I think they should do best ensemble cast. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Ocean's Eleven would still be winning now, yes. years yeah. after the last movie came out. <laughs> that, and it would be probably just that in like in um, Tarantino stuff, Tarantino basically. Yeah. 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 Lord of the Rings. Would have yeah. Been a good Lord of the Rings. Forty yeah. year old version was, had a great ensemble yes. cast. Yeah. yeah. Like Bridesmaids could have won it. You know. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, there are some. There's there's a lot of movies that come or out. Just Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of movies yeah. where there isn't yeah. end necessarily end game, one like, yeah. one lead, but you know. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people are bringing a lot of stuff to the table collectively. I think they should be recognized for that. I get down that. I get down that. All right. Yeah. Well. I mean, Endgame was like the we are the world of movies. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's impossible not to give them an award like that. <laughs> All right, then. So the worst half of Shannon Scott said Runaway Match, <laughs> a.k.a. Marriage by Motor, is a 1903 silent film directed by Alfred Collins, features the first car chase in the movie. Since then, the American love of cars has continued to grow. Max Rocket. Oh, Rakatansky's 2015 return to the big screen, Mad Max Fury Road, is basically a two-hour-long Oscar-worthy car chase, <laughs> and a cinematic definition of over-the-top, he is 1,000% correct in all of that. Yes. What is the best car chase put to film? Oh, Leslie. Boy. Okay, so... Um... My first thought, honestly, was Terminator 2, and then I went... Mm. Mm, this is best though. Is it really the best? I mean, it's I mean, awesome. It's, it's, it's up there. It's up there. <laughs> I'm mad. I didn't even think of that. I was yeah. thinking about that, that too. Was, for that a was one of the four options <laughs> that I came up with. Right. I, yeah, my my second thought was Attack of the Clones. It's not technically Cars, but no, you have that, that, that that chase great sequence at the chase. beginning. Yes. Yeah, that's really really yes, good. Yes, that is one of my uh, when Anakin and oh, Obi Wan are chasing. Anakin exactly. boosts the car. Obi Wan's just hanging onto that droid for dear life. Yeah. yeah. Like Zipping dropping through Coruscant. lightsabers. It, it's fantastic. Good that is a great action yeah. set piece. I decided on Matrix Reloaded, though. You're mm. damn right! Oh, yes. yes. That's yes. actually what I had chosen. They, <laughs> yeah. uh, they actually went through and built the highway yes. specifically mm-hmm. for that shoot. I want to say it took like 44 days. Amazing. And one of the few things that I really remember <laughs> about <laughs> the last two Matrix films, they kind of... Uh, Oh, what's the word? I blend them together in my head. Yeah. yeah. Well, that last one just sort of Revolution, fades from memory yeah. completely, but that, that car chase is yeah. something else. Yeah, that is, that is a yeah. damn good, good call. Good call. And you went with that uh, major relay? I did. Too, um, huh? And and the thing I was thinking, because I was thinking about that, or the T2, the um, the motorcycle you know, with the, in the yeah. um, semi or whatever. Yeah. But T, I mean, um, Matrix Reload, I was thinking, like, you think of all the elements that were going on there, and it should have been a damn train wreck. Mm-hmm. They had a fight going on in a, in a car while they were getting chased. And then you had what Lawrence Fishburne, Lawrence Fishburne on top of the semi. Yeah. yeah, you had agents coming after them. You had uh, what Trinity on the motorcycle yeah. running oh, yeah. away in the yeah. other yeah. direction. Stepping around, yeah. yeah. You had the twins fighting them. Um, what? Oh God! Those. Fighting in an escalator, or whatever, with Lawrence Fishburne with a katana of yeah. all things. <laughs> <laughs> You had the agents smashing cars. You had two trucks about to collide with one another. You had to fight on one of the trucks. Yeah. Yeah. Then you had Neo coming in, flying in. Like, it should not have worked at all. But <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> so 
somehow, somehow, somehow it, it just does. it came together. Absolute insanity. <laughs> what you got there, Brian? Uh, my pick is for the car chase from the Born Supremacy. Ah, uh, I was thinking about Born okay. films. Matt Damon versus Carl Urban. Uh, Damon's driving around in a cab. Urban's in an SUV, and they, and 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 he is just smacking into shit left and right. Like it's it's the most visceral, claustrophobic car chase I can remember. Nothing and graceful. About it, it feels. Well, I mean, the whole movie is very tight and claustrophobic. Like all of the fights take place in like a closet, essentially. <laughs> but um, but this car chase is no different. And I think that you know Damon's running around in this tiny car, but the roads feel very narrow, and there's no real way around things gracefully it's yeah. it's not a graceful car chase but it's very very uh impactful both literally and figuratively in the sense that like it feels like you are in the car with him through the whole thing pun yeah intended? Uh, absolutely love it what pun intended i mean it just kind of showed up <laughs> 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 <I mean, laughs> sort of happened naturally there but yes yes love it uh, all right, dope, dope. Uh, I have two, and I couldn't choose between um, which one I like more. Uh, first one is the opening of Quantum of Solace, which is mm-hmm. an often derided James Bond film. That's it was, a good chase. It came out during the writer's strike. Uh, Daniel Craig wrote a good bit of this movie, as a matter of fact, um, because the writers weren't allowed to write anything. Uh, a lot of people think this is a disjointed mess of a movie, especially coming after Casino Royale's wonderfulness. But it... Uh, it it's the first Bond film ever to pick up right where the one before it left off. Um, and boy, does it start off. Uh, the, yeah. the Aston Martin uh, DB9. The Aston Martin DB9. And you just know that these dudes are chasing after Bond. You don't know why. You don't know what's going mm-hmm. on. They got the chase through the quarry. Bond's doors ripped off. Um, cars are going over the edge left and right. And at the very end, he just gets a perfect shot and just takes his uh, whatever kind of gun he has and just shoots it right out that open door to take care of the last guy. And then he finally pulls into where he's trying to get to. And you realize that there's been a dude in the trunk this whole time. Yeah. And that's why they're chasing him. And then the dude from the end the of the dude first from movie, the end, Mr. White. <laughs> that's right. And uh, you get your opening line of the film it's time to get out. And then you get your opening credits. It is a great way to start a film. But. Also, and I alluded to this earlier, talking about stunts, uh, the man with the golden gun has the mm-hmm. singular best stunt I've seen in quite some time. Uh, it's a Roger Moore film. Uh, they're, you know, Bond is being chased. He's got the J.W. Pepper yeah. in the car with them. <laughs> and they come across the a, a broken pier? Bridge? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a bridge. A bridge. Yeah. yeah, a broken bridge that is broken in just the right Type of way, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and only in only one way is this is able to be done. Uh, and it's like a Hot Wheels track. <laughs> it, is, it, is like it really is. It really is. And uh, the car goes off one side of the broken bridge, does a complete three sixty flip horizontally, <laughs> and then lands perfectly on the other side of that bridge. There is not a single wire. There is not a single miniature. There is not a piece of CGI. They actually did that stunt. <laughs> they did it once. The stunt man got out the car, and he was like, oh, and "He was like, got it." And he ran away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing this again. It did it perfectly on the first stunt. That was all math. Mm-hmm. One of the greatest stunts I've ever seen. Wow. A couple of um, it's couple of honorable mentions insane. that just came to mind. Um, kind of probably one of my favorites as a kid. The uh, speeder bike um, uh, chasing that, that was the one of the four on my list. Yes. That was one of my four. Yes. Um, and the Batmobile chase in Batman Begins. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, all right, then. We get another one from, uh, we're rolling through this pretty quick. Uh, we got another one from uh, one Mr. Evan Peanut Butter, who I may or may not see when I go out there for uh, Emerald City Comic Con next year. Uh, he says, this month's question, yet another simple one for you there, Brian. <laughs> he said, who do you want to be your spiritual guide through all your life's memories and into the cosmos? It's a simple question <laughs> he says, with a complicated answer. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone real or fictional, living or dead um leslie what do you have oh (laughs) um so this may be a little bit predictable i went with general leia not princess leia but general leia oh she's and and this is absolutely influenced by the fact that we watched the force awakens recently (laughs) (laughs) um but just she has that life experience she still has that fire and that drive but it's tempered um 
she shows Ray a lot of compassion. Uh, she shows Poe compassion in um, The Last Jedi. And uh, she's very sassy with Han. Yeah. Um, so I just, I think that would be a perfect blend to go through all the different memories and emotions of my life and, you know, have yeah. somebody with that blend of compassion and sass and Yeah, and I think Last Jedi gets a lot of flack from a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons, but she is, like, Leia's presence is so good in that movie. Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, I think I would have to go with Princess over General because I want the super spunky, like, the, what were you thinking? And this, <laughs> <laughs> all the possible options, this is the one you decided to choose? I think she, I think Princess Leia would give me the more entertaining spiritual journey. <laughs> Whereas you're like, all right, this is, just, you, you want the guy, yes. I want the entertainment. Uh, <laughs> uh, good call though very good call thank you. what do you got there Joe? Um, well, I can only think of one person who oh Jesus Christ <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson no <laughs> actually no actually no not him not him I'm sorry I'm also one of them no I was going to go Morgan Freeman as God okay oh, okay. 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 okay yeah I want to yeah I want to hear his voice um, leading me off into the afterlife and all that going through all my, my life's memories and stuff and I um, also want um, MF Doom to do the soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. Just to have those two together, the like metal putting together. Face yes. Villain himself. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. I was like, until you get to the actual God, and he's like, is Morgan Freeman still down there perpetrating? It's <laughs> <laughs> really like a Lance Moore set. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> what if I don't sound like yeah. him? What if MF Doom removes his mask and, it, and you find out it stands for Morgan Freeman Doom? Oh! <laughs> Oh, and mine, actually, mine is gone. gone. Mine, this, fuck. Mine, yes. my, mine, fuck. Of, doom the whole time. I, I didn't, had no idea. <laughs> and then Samuel L. Jackson comes and says, "Trick or treat, motherfucker!" <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker! This, this is how I want to die. That's, that's how that's, I want to go out. Yeah. That's exactly how I want to go out. <laughs> and, and you can't tell anybody because you're about to go out. It's yeah. just a constant revelation like over will, and over. Forever. It's like you will not believe what I just saw. <laughs> it's like, no, we won't. <laughs> If I hadn't died, you wouldn't have believed it. It's a memoir <laughs> All right, that Brian. came too late. <laughs> what you got? Uh, for me, I, you know, I wanted it to be like some some like uh, troubadour balladeer, like uh, Johnny Cash or John Prine or somebody. But really, the only answer for me is Jerry Seinfeld. Yes. <laughs> okay. I want what him, are you doing? I want him why, to be why? like Christmas of 1985. <laughs> 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 Nintendo. You, <laughs> you didn't get a Nintendo again this year. <laughs> what was going what on was with your life? life? Yes. Yeah. What? What is this dip's giving? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like everything is a dip. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be a great way to take your take it through. Jerry Seinfeld, huh? Yeah, yeah, that would be it. He could, he could give me one of those nice, classy roadsters from uh, Comedians of Cars Getting yeah. Coffee. Yeah, that's a nice little like, BMW for you. Hop in, Brian. This is your life. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the nearest Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. Uh, for me, there's only one name that pops to my mind. Uh, he's been a already being a friend and companion to us all. Uh, throughout Pete the Lentz. years, <laughs> who, yes! I, who I hung out with last night, as a matter of fact, uh, it's Bob Ross. Oh. oh, yes, I think Bob Ross is going to just <laughs> okay. take my hand and then just leave me. And here's where you've met your first love. And this is what happened. It was a very happy love, wasn't it, Daryl? It let's was take great. a look at it. Let's take a look at your love real quick. Oh, oh, great. no, those are some painful memories right there. We're going to skip right on past those. <laughs> I think, I think paint right over those. Yeah, yeah, those, those, those happy little trees. Yeah, we're just going to put, put a, a little cloud. tree right over there. We're going to put a cloud right here. This is a bad decision right here, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to stop and investigate it, but we want to talk about the happy experiences. Yeah, I think uh, having Bob Ross lead me through my life would be an informative Sometimes shameful <laughs> experience. It's like, you remember that Queen City pod quest, don't you? <laughs> no, no, Bob, no, no. He just grabs your head. Look at it, girl. Oh, okay, Bob, I'm sorry. I think at the end, I would be, I'd be ready to go, and I'd be satisfied with what. And he wouldn't be judgmental, I don't think. He's, you know, we all make mistakes sometimes, Daryl. All right, and uh, we got two more here. Uh, Candace, our green-eyed, wonder, wonderful Candace. We'll be in here later on with me and Jamon doing uh, some Star Wars talk. If you were a mystery solving gang, what roles would you fall into? <laughs> I'll kick this off. <laughs> <laughs> I, they, they just, from being the host of this show, I guess I would be the Fred of the whole deal. Uh, I'll get my ascot game up, make sure my, <laughs> my kerchief my kerchief is on correctly. Uh, and Leslie, of course, be Velma, because that just makes no other sense to me. 
Get your jinkies on. See, I thought about that. I really did. And initially, that's that's what I thought I would go with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see what you went with here in a yeah. second. Uh, the role of Scooby Doo will be played by Jermon Jackson <laughs> the first half of the season, and then by Brian the second half of the season. I'm just switching it up. Yeah. And the role of Shaggy will be played by Brian the first half of the season, and Jermon the second half had, of the season. That's, that's perfect perfect sense. Sense. my list. I had the I hungry much, one. That's my yeah, role. I, I pretty much. I, I didn't know where every, exactly where everybody else would fall, but I pretty much went that route, and I was like, I was probably either going to be Scooby or Scrappy, or I mean, Scooby or um, Shaggy. Yeah. Making those big ass sandwiches, like shuffling and stuff, like like, like playing air. cards and stuff. <laughs> Goes right down yeah. the middle. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, what else? Well, what, well that pretty much, much that pretty much fell in line with like, everything yeah. else. Like, yeah, you, yeah, use the you know use the Fred roll because you're yeah. Of course, you run the whole whole show here. Yeah. Your uncle may yeah, or may not own a tabloid newspaper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We should have had a red herring in there. Right, like, yeah, red herring. <gasps> Jermon is Pete Lentz. <laughs> well, no, I'm talking about like the red herring from a uh, pup named Scooby Doo, uh, like, uh, the yeah, one that Fred yeah. always used to blame stuff on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, what else you got? What you got, Leslie? Uh, so, I, you are Fred, of course. Scooby. <laughs> I, I was initially going to go with myself as Velma, but then I decided to read up on Daphne because I don't really remember much about her other than she's pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, and and she's, so yeah, she's pretty, but she's also got the red hair, fashion sense. Uh, um, but she has a knack for getting into danger. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured between the red hair, the knack for getting into danger, and the fact that she's usually paired off with Fred. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That guess that kind of makes sense. Uh, and then I actually went a little bit out of the box and made Brian Velma. That's that's actually my real answer was Velma for me. <laughs> <laughs> the one who would... Uh, you know, with the wherewithal to look shit up occasionally. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. So you're, yeah. you're the one going, hey guys, jinkies, I found this thing. Oh, oh, I figured it out. Ah, all right. That's what's up. That's what's up. What else do you have for everybody? So, mostly the same. You as as Fred, um, uh, Leslie, you were Daphne, and um, Jamal. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Shaggy. It's Shaggy. All like, right. like okay. when I try okay. to picture who would be the person eating a hoagie 10 times his, the size of his head <laughs> in one bite, <laughs> it's Jamal. It's Jamal. Jamal. Pushing it down. Chomp, <laughs> <laughs> chomp, <laughs> Have any of you watched the newer Scooby Doo that came out? Well, I remember I had the I think from a couple of years Mystery ago. Incorporated. Yes, I had yeah. my daughter for a uh, Mystery Incorporated is the shit. Was that yeah. the one that is good? Was that the one where they had because they had I can't remember if that series or the one before that where they had an episode called Those Meddling Kids where it was like uh, all the like it was like Jabberjaw and the gang. It was like <laughs> oh really? Yeah, it wasn't this one. It wasn't this. Yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was a, a previous and then it was like the Funky Phantom, like pretty much all the stuff that um, Hannah Barbera ripped off of themselves yeah. over the years. <laughs> and they all had to team up for a mystery, yeah, basically. The fact that, that, that the Mystery Inc. actually is a one giant storyline. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it's not just random adventure after it. Uh, it's, it's multiple random adventures that all fit within one giant narrative. Yeah. Okay. Put it oh, wow. Okay. Like there was a mystery team before them and they have vanished. So they're trying to figure out what happened to it was the like mystery. The, it was like okay. when, when Xavier sent the X-Men to Krakoa the first time. <laughs> right. Oh, jeez. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, we're going to need a new mystery team, guys. Yeah. Or it's, it's like when it's Farnsworth on Futurama had replaced the entire crew. And, <laughs> yeah. and they came back from mission. He's like, and you'll be the wise cracking robot. And you'll be the delivery bo- <laughs> Oh, never mind. Go away. <laughs> uh, yeah, check out Mystery Inc. if you have not. Uh, and the last one comes from Melissa Boris. Uh, comes with a, I think, Possibly one of the greatest questions we've had on Choose Our Own Adventure. Uh, it has been alleged that uh, the MCU is not cinema. So oh, match shit. we have <laughs> completely bullshit. Match one of the following all tour directors, one of the original Avengers to direct their origin films. We had Scorsese, we had David Lynch, we had uh, Ing- Ingmar Bergman, we had Kurosawa, we had Kubrick. And I think it was Hitchcock. 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 There we go. Yeah. Uh, so I'll go ahead and kick this off real quick, fast. Um, for Scorsese, I picked Iron Man. That makes the most sense to me. Uh, Marty knows character development. I mean, we we saw development all throughout Goodfellas. You will see it throughout The Irishman. Um, 
casino, right? Uh, there's actually some good development in Shutter Island. Uh, and I'd like to see what Scorsese would do with Tony Stark. Plus, uh, since Tony Stark was the partying playboy, we can get those Wolf of Wall Street type party scenes that happen <laughs> all throughout that movie just with, uh, with Tony Stark in there for good measure. Um, David Lynch, he is the weirdest of these directors. So I went with the, the weirdest Avengers and I gave him Hulk. Um, I think you can go super weird with Hulk. Uh, you can do like uh, like Joe fix it stuff, and you want to throw some Red Hulk in there and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, you give a Hulk to Lynch. Um, Hitchcock gets Black Widow mm. since he is the master of suspense. I figured, well, you know, a spy thriller with Alfred Hitchcock doing uh, Black Widow just makes sense to me. Uh, Ingmar Bergman, uh, a lot of his films. Uh, that I've seen over the years that have dealt with mortality and loneliness. And that to me just screams Hawkeye because you know, you're, you're hanging out with gods and people who are over the top geniuses. And he is the most exposed of all the Avengers. Uh, and I wouldn't give him that, that, that Joss Whedon family nonsense. Like he is just on his own. And the whole Matt fraction run is, well, what does Hawkeye do when he's not with the Avengers? <laughs> um, I think that would be deal a lot with that loneliness and whatnot. So Ingmar Bergman gets Hawkeye. Um, Akira Kurosawa. It'd be interesting uh, to see the one character in the MCU who embodies American hopes and ideals like Captain America through the lens of a Japanese filmmaker. Hmm. Hmm. So he gets Cap. And by default, Kubrick gets Thor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and yeah, that's it. And then when they all come together to do the Avengers, I bring back Kurosawa because he obviously knows ensemble cast because that motherfucker did Seven Samurai. All right, so whoever Dude, wants to go next, go um, I think. Well, let me see here because I said match one with. Because I think I only did one or what, with with one director or okay. whatever. But I had I had a couple other uh, another idea or so like floating around like. I was thinking of doing a Kurosawa um, Hawkeye movie, like kind of set during his time as Ronin, yeah. mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I, my main one, I went with uh, Kubrick doing a cat movie, um, kind of in the vein of a uh, Full Metal Jacket, where you know he's this scrawny kid in the army back in the forties, and, <laughs> and then he blows it, his it, head out and, and, like, <laughs> halfway through the movie. Tommy, Tommy Lee Jones is that sergeant giving him shit all the time and stuff, yeah, disrespecting him. He's getting bullied, and then, and then you know eventually he becomes Cap, but. Um, you know, it's gonna you're gonna see more of the kind of the horrors of war and everything. And you know, by the time Cap gets to the Avengers, he's like, "Man, I've seen some shit." I've mean, <laughs> like, seen some shit. Yeah, because like he's definitely gods gonna, and aliens. That ain't nothing compared yeah, to what I've seen. Yeah, some PTSD for real. <laughs> All right, uh, Leslie, what you got? Um, so when I googled to make sure I had the correct first six Avengers, <laughs> <laughs> Ant Man and the Wasp. <laughs> Um, no, it gave me Doctor Strange instead of Hawkeye. Ooh. So that, that'll mix it up a little bit. Ah, the Bendis year is creeping in here. Also. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I went with um, Black Widow for Scorsese. Mm. Um, I want to see that sort of violent mob vibe going in. Um, okay. I, I know she's a spy, but I want to see more of more of her training and, and that sort of thing. Um so David Lynch, again, like you said, being the most weird, I gave him the most weird on my list. Oh, strange. <laughs> Which I is would, yeah. strange. I would strange. Yeah. I would fuck with a Lynch strange. I, I don't even either, like Lynch. I was yeah. thinking even that, either that or Kubrick, like kind of in the vein of a uh, 2001 Space yeah. Odyssey. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Alfred Hitchcock, I went with Iron Man. Um just for the fun of it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think he was the last one I chose. Sorry. <laughs> um, Bergman, I gave Captain America. Uh, okay. uh, Kurosawa, I want to see them do see him do Thor. Um, hmm. I want to see that take. And Kubrick, I gave Hulk. I think he could have some fun with Hulk. Okay, I can get down with that. And Brian. Well, the, the first one that came to my head was, and this is a little bit of a cheat because he wasn't one of the Avengers on screen. He was one of the first Avengers in the comics. But a David Lynch Ant-Man movie would be weird as hell. Yes, it would. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where most of the time is spent at a microscopic level. Yeah, up in the and microverse. Like, and like these, the, not, not even, just like like bugs and stuff are running like coffee shops and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> right under our feet we never noticed. Yeah. Like it's going to be this just weird, just entry point into this microscopic world of of ants and things. This is going to be like a bug's life, but like 
Paul Rudd is there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, uh, Stanley Kubrick would be a really good director for Iron Man, and, and, and it would be about Tony Stark gradually surrendering himself to the machine and becoming just a machine. <laughs> the, the fly. Okay. I had thought of right. a yeah. I, I, years ago, I thought of a Cronenberg type like Iron Man movie where that was happening, where he's basically replacing himself with machinery until he's yeah, pretty much all machine, like more machine than that. <laughs> and the other one that really, uh, really stood out to me as having a lot of potential would be an Igmar Bergman Hulk movie. Uh, I think it would be uh, again like loneliness and and coming to terms with who you are and and what you're always going to be. Uh, I would shoot it all in black and white. So Ooh. let's just say it's Gray Hulk. Sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, Hulk Gray. There would be a lot of like themes of isolation and loneliness, just right. abounding. Like I mean, it would be not be a great superhero movie. It would probably Bleak. It, people would probably look at it and say it was worse than Ang Lee's. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. But those are the three that I really, really came up with. I think that Alfred Hitchcock could do a good cat movie, um, and I would like to see an Akira Kurosawa. Thor movie, uh, because again, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of potential for an ensemble in a Thor movie, given all of the the warriors of Asgard, and mm. uh, I think that sort of an Asgard under siege, and Thor is assuming the throne for the first time. Kurosawa movie would be uh, would have a lot of potential. Boom, and there you and there you have it. Uh, really quickly, going around the table, uh, what are you nerding out on lately, Brian? So, um, speaking of Disney Plus, if you have not seen the short film on Disney Plus called Float, I really, really recommend it. It's a Disney Plus original, and uh, it just it, it speaks to parents of like uh, kids with any sort of challenges, uh, autistic challenges, whatever it is. It's just a, it's a movie about a kid who's different. It's about six minutes long. Definitely, definitely watch it. All right, Leslie, what you got? Uh I've been doing a Supernatural rewatch in order to um, be all caught up completely with the series while uh, before the, seri- the series finale airs, I want to say, next year. Um, it's in the current last season. And then beyond that, uh, Watchmen. Watchmen, oh, yeah. Watchmen, yeah, Watchmen. Yeah, jeez. Come on, what you got? I've been playing, um, I just started playing that new Star Wars uh, Jedi Fallen Order oh, game, which yeah. is pretty awesome. Nice. And um, I just got into that Japanese Spider-Man show, which is just off the rails. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, and I'm, I'm still uh, immersed in many things, getting ready for the 2019 Pop Rico Awards, which I'm fairly certain you two clowns will be uh, back to help yeah, out. Yeah, these two clowns will be back. <laughs> By the way, happy belated birthday to Mr. Brian Martin. Oh, yeah. oh thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Good it's time. a good, good, uh, good birthday. Excellent, excellent. All right, and that's going to do it for our November episode. We will be back to uh, to round out the year with next year's or uh, next month's uh, last one of the uh, last one of the decade. And that's it. And you guys out there, take it easy, and thanks for supporting. <laughs>